This is Meta Ray-Ban Display. So Meta just released their incredible AI-powered glasses and we certainly need to talk about it. What's up fam, welcome back to the channel. Today we are breaking down the Ray-Ban Meta AI Glasses Gen 2. Don't worry, this ain't a promo. We are gonna dig into the AI tech inside and what it actually means for the future of wearables. These are glasses with the classic style that you'd expect from Ray-Ban, but they're the first AI glasses with a high resolution display. So let's look at the camera. So they got a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera that shoots up to 3K videos at 30 frames per second. For everyday recording, that's a serious bump over Gen 1. I think Gen 1 was probably 720 pixels, but I could be wrong. Either 720 or 1080. Audio got a big upgrade as well. It got an open ear speakers plus a five mic array. This is where A comes in. The glasses use conversational focus to isolate voice even in noisy environment. The AI features are quite a lot. They have the live translation built in with more languages being added. Future updates promise hyperlapse, slow motion and smarter on the fly edits powered by AI. The battery is also quite improved. It has around eight hours of typical use with a charging case that tops you on the go. On the storage side as well, it got an upgrade with a 32GB onboard storage, it got a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity with a 32GB storage, it can fill up very fast so you'll need cloud storage to back it up. Let's look at the AI side of features. One of the most important feature of the glasses for me will be live translation. I travel a lot guys and last week I was in Korea. I know a little bit of Korean but I was having really tough time understanding the language there so these glasses would have helped me immensely. Um, but I'm not sure if they have Korean right now as a, one of the translated language. Uh, I know they have English, French, German, uh, Spanish and few other European languages. So not sure when they will release Korean for us. Just imagine someone speaking to you in a different language, but you can see the live translation right in front of your eyes. That will be Today, super cool. I'm guys. cooking in Spanish. Hey Meta, start live translation. Starting live translation from Spanish to English. So chef, what are we making today? Uh, vamos a cocinar. Today we are going to cook a Guatemalan meal called pepian de pollo. This is so cool. I can understand what you're saying. Now you don't have to translate for me anymore. Primero vamos a cortar the first step, we will cut the tomatoes in half. Okay. Now we're going to serve a dish and we're going to dress it with cilantro and sesame seed. Mmm, gracias. If you're curious how this works, let's deep dive. When someone speaks to you, the glasses capture their voice using the 5 mic array attached with the glasses. The AI first isolates the speaker's voice from all the background noise. Think of it as separating the person talking from a crowded street or noisy cafe. This is the same tech that is used in airports and other audio devices. It runs the voice through a speech-to-text engine which converts the spoken words into text. Some of this might happen on the device itself, but for complex words or un uncommon words, it might probably tap into the cloud. Once the words are converted to text, the AI translation engine kicks in. This is likely a transformer-based language model that's optimized for real-time translation. It can detect context, handle proper nouns, and adjust grammar depending on the sentence. After translation, it converts the text back into speech using a neural text-to-speech model that's a low latency enough to sound natural. The goal is to play the translated audio in real time through open ears, keeping the experience seamless. The tricky part is that to they need to make sure that the translated speech matches the natural pacing of the original speaker so you're not hearing weird delays or chopped sentences. Another feature is conversational focus, which is all about isolating voices in real time. The AI uses the mic array to figure out where sound is coming from and identify which voices is the one you care about. Then it suppresses all the background sounds. This is basically applying real time audio source separation, something you might have seen in research with convolution testnet or other neural networks for separating overlapping voices. The isolated voice is then amplified in the open ear speaker so you can hear the conversation clearly. And a whole new way to interact with them. The meta neural band. That's this guy. All right, now, and then there's the neural interface. The meta neural band. So for the glasses, we are replacing the keyboard, mouse, touchscreen, buttons, dials, with the ability to send signals from your brain with little muscle movements that the neural band will pick up so you can silently control your glasses with barely perceptible movements. We have built a neural interface into a durable, lightweight, comfortable, and good-looking wristband. We wanted to make it really easy 
to send and receive messages. So it's um, good to just be able to type without anyone seeing. And um, <laughs> so now I'm going to be able to open up MetaAI with, uh, with a subtle tap that you're probably not even going to see. Play California Dreamin'. From Spotify, here's California Dreamin' by the Mamas and the Papas. All right, and if I want to adjust the volume, I act like there's a volume control in front of me, and I can just turn it. it and there we go. With the, um, the Ray-Ban Metas, they're going to be able to turn up the volume on a friend. But with the display, you could do even better. Uh, you can put subtitles on the world. So earlier in the Meta presentation, the glasses also comes bundled with a wearable device. Researchers at Meta AI just unveiled a generic non-invasive neuromotor interface that lets you interact with computers using surface electromyography. SEMG or surface electromyography is a technique that measures the tiny electric signals your muscles generate when they move. So unlike the brain-computer interface, which requires electrodes on the scalp or even in invasive implants, SEMG is non-invasive, so you just wear a wristband, flex your muscles, and your body's natural electrical signals becomes computer command. This is work really at the intersection of, uh, you know, brain-computer, brain-machine interfaces and human-computer interactions, uh, where the goal was to create one of these neuromotor interfaces that would work across people. Um, so the idea is you could put this computing device on any person and, ha and have them be able to use it to uh, control a computer, to enter text, uh, to control a cursor, um, or to, say, play video games. And so the idea behind the paper is, you know, we develop a strategy that allows that generic control, something that works across anyone, and we do it also in a way that is non-invasive, so you don't have to implant electrodes into your, or into your brain. Uh, or, or in any other part of your body. The promise of glasses and AI is that they're gonna help with this over time. So you just start a live AI session, and the glasses are gonna be able to see what you see, hear what you hear, and they're gonna be able to go off and think about it, and then go come back and help you. Um, the glasses are gonna come in two colors. Uh, they're gonna come in black and sand. And you are going to be able to buy the set for $7.99 in stores.